Welcome back to another video of me doing things to my car. In this episode, contradictions. In my last video, I mentioned that I was completely satisfied with how my vehicle was set up and I wasn't going to change anything for the foreseeable future. And from what I can tell, I'm pretty satisfied with it. I don't think I'll be changing anything for the foreseeable future. So naturally, being a walking, talking contradiction, I have found something that needs to be changed. And here it is. This little Pinocchio bastard. Insert your own non-politically correct joke here. So why is this such an issue? Well... It snaps off, lets all your air out so your lockers don't work, and means that your Land Cruiser gets outperformed by a Prado. So what am I going to do about it? Well, the logical method is to take the fitting out and reposition it somewhere that it's not going to get snapped off by the floor every time I go into a ditch. But I'm not logical, so I'm going to make an over-engineered guard for it, so I can upload it to YouTube and show off some of my cool machines. So I guess I'd better get started. So the first cool thing on the list is a 3D scanner. Not really, those are expensive. This is one of those spy on your family cameras from an Xbox. But you can also use them as a basic 3D scanner to save yourself several thousand dollars. So I'm going to scan the back of the car where I plan to put this bracket so I can build stuff the lazy engineering graduate who doesn't like to get his hands dirty way. that barely resembles the thing that you scanned. So I guess this needs to be refined a little bit. So how does this all work? Well, if you don't care, skip to this time. Otherwise, shut up and listen. So this scanner uses time of flight method to 3D scan things. And what this means is that it sends lots of little pulses of light at the object and figures out how far each point is away from the source based on how long each pulse takes to return to the sensor. Now the result is, as you move the scanner around, it's able to scan an object based on comparing new points to old points. And then in post-processing, it puts it all together and ends up with a very lumpy object like we just found. So now you're a 3D scanning expert. Let's move on. So what do we do now? Well, we figure out what sort of bracket we want to make. So it has to meet three criteria. Firstly, it has to protect the Pinocchio fitting on the back of the car so it doesn't snap off and lose my lockers again. It also has to not cause any departure angle issues compared to what it already has. And finally, it has to not act as an obscurely shaped spoon on the back of my car for gathering dirt. So with that in mind, so let's give it a go. As it's a bracket, there's nothing particularly complicated here. And this is what I've come up with. A three-piece monstrosity that hopefully won't snap off and will still let me use my air fitting. I also need to hope that it doesn't act as a dirty spoon so rubbish and detritus doesn't fill it up like a cheap whore. It's time for another cool thing. A CNC plasma cutter. So if you don't care how it works, skip to this time. But if you're interested in spicy fire metal melting monstrosities and how they work, Let's find out. This is a plasma cutter. And it cuts metal quite well. But how can a plasma cutter do this? The clue is not in the name. It does not cut metal with blood. Instead, it uses electrical arcs and compressed air 
to essentially decompose the gas into a plasma state. And this helps create an inert environment to help heat the metal to its melting point, where it's then blown through by compressed air. Now the best part about this is that it only needs compressed air and electricity to work. So there's no need for fancy pants, inert gases, and skills. But that's only half the story. This is a CNC cutter, and this means computer stuff is involved. Basically, the table the plasma cutter is attached to is controlled numerically, which is a lot more accurate than your average Parkinson's afflicted fabricator. Anyway, lecture over, it's time to press some buttons and make some fire stuff happen. So after some rework and some highly inaccurate bending, this is the result. Some non-stuck together brackety bits that don't look like they belong. So the next thing to do is to figure out what type of welds I need to put where and stick them together. V-welds here. And T-welds here on the bull bar. So I'm not entirely sure if a welder is considered to be a cool thing, so I'll give it half a point. But on second thoughts, it's a gasless MIG welder, so therefore it's worth half, so I'll give it a quarter of a point. Anyway, I guess I'd better do some tacking and tweaking. Now I'm quite satisfied with that. Now seeing as it fits somewhat, I'd better weld the rest of it up and hope that it doesn't warp. is grind off a load of paint and stick it to the car. painted final result, I guess. It's not disgraceful, but it could be better. And hopefully it stops you from getting snapped off again. So I'll tidy that up a bit and paint it. Now as for the weld quality, I know it's not great, but it's actually better than I've seen in a lot of final products not naming any names. So I'll take it apart a little bit so I can paint it a bit better, and then I'll clean up my disgraceful looking grubby face.
So that was a bit tedious, wasn't it? But regardless, hopefully I now have an air fitting that won't snap off every few trips, and a bracket that won't act as a dirt spoon. You just spent this long watching an idiot make a bracket. <laughs>